Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday night, February 21st, 2025 is the date. It's about 6.01 p.m. here, California time. Uh, latest activity shows a little small earthquake here across California, but uh, notice up north, a little bit of larger movement kicking up. I wanted to cover this earlier, this earthquake that came in uh, to the Canada area, Vancouver Island or Vancouver region of Canada. Uh, 4.8. I wanted to cover this earlier, but I was right in the middle of a whole bunch of school stuff, so I had absolutely no way to break away. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's a decent-sized earthquake up there around Canada, outside of Vancouver. Felt uh, fairly broadly across the region, as you can see listed up here on the USGS map. Uh, mainly light to moderate shaking here being reported by the US USGS for a 4.8 at 10 kilometers deep now the earthquakes canada map here uh, reporting this as a 4.7 earthquake and uh, that was put out today of course historical events in this area uh, let's go ahead and check out the usgs model real quick it's been a little while since we've had any felt earthquakes up here but it's all a part of increasing pressure out here across the west coast in general um, also some movement. Let me show you guys real quick this earthquake. Well away from Vancouver, way up into the Alberta area, this 4.7 in the oil fields up here. This is the oil field similar to what we have down in Texas in the States. Uh, just what happens is a lot of pressure uh, inland on the North American plate here and these uh, oil and pumping operations there tend to get earthquakes uh, very common up there actually in that area. And an overall sign and pattern of increasing pressure out here across the uh, the general west coast area and that includes canada as well we got the cascadia subduction zone here that sits well sits offshore that's a sleeping giant so let's go ahead and check out the um little earthquake history here we're going to go back here just uh to the year 2000 and take a look at the vancouver region up here that uh, definitely felt some decent shaking up there this afternoon. So we'll go ahead and pull this up, see what we have historically for this area from the USGS. As far as 4.5 and above goes, it's uh, actually not all that common up here. They might, they may have had some smaller ones out here historically, but as far as these uh, moderate quakes here, the 4.8 like we had today, uh, very rare. The last one, 4.5, a little bit further south here off the Vancouver Island range is there 4.5 back in 2020 uh, another 4.8 back in 2015 uh, near Victoria so earthquake activity obviously not all that common but uh, you know occasionally we get these uh, I believe that's a surface fracture out here associated with the strain across the Cascadia subduction zone you know just even though that may seem like a long ways away from Vancouver to the Cascadia subduction zone here Tectonically speaking, it's just a little skip, hop, skip, and a jump away from far as pressure gradients go off the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, tremor activity up there recently has been fairly quiet. Uh, a little bit of movement here um, showing up on the map from today. See these red dots up here? That's pretty much due. Let me pull this back up here and take a look. I'm struggling, folks, with my voice. It's it's annoying. It's, I'm not back to normal yet. So if you look at the trimmer map here today, we got uh, just a handful of trimmer in this area. Now, some trimmer down south here in Oregon as well. This is associated with the Cascadia subduction zone trimmer, not volcanic trimmer, but uh, slow slip events that take place between the, between the subdu subducting plate and and the North American plate. You got the Juan de Fuca plate subducting underneath the North American plate. Now, even though there's only a handful of trimmer here, it looks like that was just enough strain to produce some surface fracturing up there. Uh, I wouldn't doubt if we see maybe a little bit more uh, earthquake activity in general. Just, uh, I mean, that's just a little odd to see only seven trimmers here, but maybe less than that. Uh, looks like six or so. Uh, but it's roughly in that same area. This is deeper trimmer activity uh, downstream, 45 kilometers or so underneath this area. This earthquake striking six miles deep. So um, upstream, but it appears as though any type of trimmer activity is uh, triggering strain 
resulting in earthquakes in that area. Just that's not a coincidence that we're seeing tremor there uh, and resulting earthquake in that same area due to the just a small amount of tremor. So keep an eye there on the Vancouver Island range. We may not or Vancouver area, uh, but all, that also could include the Vancouver Island ranges here. I don't think we're over yet uh, in terms of earthquake activity. That's some interesting movement. Down south where the tremor activity is stirring up. Uh, not a whole lot there in Oregon uh, into the Northern California. Yes, got a couple twos and whatnot here in the last 24 hours. It's been quite elevated down there. Uh, but yeah, let me know if you felt that earthquake up there in the Vancouver region. I do have quite a few viewers up there that... Uh, watch this channel so i appreciate the input uh, they did send out apparently from the earthquakes canada map a uh historical or a uh, early notification system there look at this earthquake activity in the oil fields here's one of the more recent earthquakes here within the last um day or so 3.5 and also a little bit larger earthquake here 4.6 uh, in the oil fields up there of um um, Canada quite a bit there in the last month or so uh, so interesting activity nonetheless over here across the Cascadia subduction zone we got uh, some movement on the strike slip boundaries not a whole lot on the Cascadia itself but uh, the strain is there for sure uh, and any tremor activity that occurs down in, underneath this area appears to be triggering strain upstream uh, up at the surface level so just keep an eye on that region there, folks. USGS doing a little, um, it looks pretty neat. I'm impressed with it. It looks colorful. Uh, they got all of their maps back to normal here. Got the grayscale out here, the ocean, terrain, uh, street maps, satellite view. I, I like the satellite view. That way we can see kind of what's out here. This earthquake not associated with any uh, oil pumping operations out there. This is... Uh, definitely resulted from that trimmer activity that's occurred throughout the day today uh, but we'll keep it on the uh keep it on the terrain map i do like that <coughs> all right uh let's see what else we got here across the west coast some movement up in northern california is noted san francisco bay area pretty quiet super volcano there in southern california that's long valley super volcano a couple small earthquakes nothing big going on southern california in general pretty quiet nothing above 2.5 Got to keep an eye on the areas up north. Yellowstone, nothing showing up. But I guarantee you, if their data is working, let's see. That, uh, well, this is uh, behind here. This is uh, well behind. 221, 1400. We're way past that. We're into the next UTC time already. So this is a day behind as far as uh, Yellowstone activity goes so we we're not we're not able to see the four pointer that struck up in vancouver on this graph normally we would i bet you we would on the uh pacific northwest seismic network here there's that trimmer again but i want to check out uh, a couple seismograph stations up there see what that uh may have looked like probably a decent signature are we working are we not oh man where's our Let's check out around the Seattle area. I'm sure that showed up. Uh, this is actually a little on the slow side, so we're not going to even deal with that. Georgetown, Seattle, Washington area. This one's out of whack. Wow, can't even see anything on there. So let's check out um, Mount St. Helens seismograph station. I'm just kind of curious to see what that signature looked like. Uh, from the earthquake way up north there of, of Washington in Vancouver. There it is. Beautiful signature there. Showed up quite nicely there in uh, Mount St. Helens seismograph station. So anyway, we'll continue to keep an eye on that region up north. Uh, rest of the oil fields out here in Texas getting hit uh, with some earthquakes. Nothing major going on out there across the east. As far as the last 24 hours, the largest, largest earthquake activity. Well, that's going to be a 5.1 Vanuatu from yesterday. So far today, a 4.9 along the uh, Tonga area here, just south of Tonga. Tonga Trench, pretty shallow, though, and about uh, six miles deep for that earthquake. Uh, let's see here. 
Japan area, a couple smaller quakes around the area. Seeing if there's anything major to chat about. We can check out the Santorini area, uh, see what's going on there across that uh, region. I'm sure they're still seeing some earthquake activity as we zoom in to the Santorini uh, volcano area. Nothing showing up online. What's going on here? No earthquakes. Oh, there we go. I was going to say, what's going on? I mean, I don't think it's my internet. It just seems like some stuff is going a, a little slow here right now. Uh, 704 events there across the area of Santorini, Colombo Volcano area with the latest event as a uh, 2.1, a little bit further away from that swarm region. So still seeing some earthquake activity up there. We can check the seismograph station here. Uh, wrong one. No, that's the right one. I don't know what is going on here. This is not good. Very slow. Not affecting my uh, upload speed there, but something's going on here with the uh, network. Uh, either way, some earthquake activity showing up there, although things are dying down across the Santorini, Greece area. We'll continue to watch this, folks. Um, you know, nothing has played out yet. I believe that was a, a firm, large magma intrusion underneath the area. Uh, so far, you know, we've seen probably 12, 13,000 earthquakes or so in the last couple of weeks with no eruption. But that does not mean that uh, things are going away. We'll watch for escalation here in the days, weeks, and months ahead. Uh, things take time in this type of respect of uh, volcanic eruption and magma intrusion. Uh, for space weather activity here, got a number of sunspots that are currently facing us, including a new group here. Uh, that's sunspot 4000. Notice the, uh, it's starting to get some uh, complexity with it. Also some coverage area. This region down here as well looks like a uh, area to watch. So we got two regions there of uh, some interest in terms of potential stronger flaring. We'll keep an eye on those two areas. Uh, these guys showing a 10% chance for X flare, M flare at 40. Uh, a little bit of flaring going on right now. Looks like some C flare activity from, uh, well, could be from any of these sunspots out here. Maybe some on the far eastern limb as well. Uh, but it looks like just some general C flare activity from uh, maybe a combination of all of them. Nothing major going on for the severe weather for now. Uh, we'll take a look at that once things get going. As far as any major storm systems going on out here, well, California high and dry. Got uh, maybe a return to wet pattern as we uh, as a to a wet pattern as we head into the first week of March. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, stay safe out there, folks. Again, keep an eye on the Vancouver area. Uh, that uh, you know is not a coincidence there with that trimmer trimmer occurring throughout the day today resulting in some strain upstream here some earthquake activity uh, that tells me that things are quite tense out here so to speak similar to how we see uh, northern California events any trimmer activity that occurs down here into the Cascadia is resulting in elevated earthquake activity back upstream so uh, uh, watch the uh, Vancouver area folks let me know if you felt that earthquake and uh, how long it was and maybe if it was a jolt or a, a rolling motion and whatnot. We'll catch you guys out here a little bit later, folks. Stay safe.